Tweets with Hot Topics, Hot Tweets, and the spiciest memes. I'm Marissa Roberto. And I'm AJ Fry. This is how the show is going to work. Producer Tyler puts two minutes on the board for each topic, which we will present and most likely argue about. Right. And lucky for all of us, we have this fine <gasps> mute button hey, right here, you which either one of us can press if the other uh -uh. gets out of line. I'll no, just keep that excuse up. Excuse me. No, I'll be fair. Fair game, AJ Fry. Right. Listen, shout out to chat, because we like it when you call us out when we're wrong and praise us when we're spitting truth. So let's get to it. we got to kick off our stories with some exciting action in League of Legends. The 2019 Spring Split playoff finals were held around the world just this past weekend, and viewers were treated to two very different competitions. In in the LCS, Team Liquid reverse swept Team Solo mid in a nail-biting five-game series that saw both teams play to their full potential, but that's not what everyone's talking about because over in the LEC, G2 set a record for the quickest playoff series ever, crushing Origin in under 80 minutes. So, AJ, what kind of series is best in your mind? One where a team gets completely stomped by the other or an intense back and forth? Well, I, do you really have to pick one or the other in this case? Because right they're both do. fun in different circumstances. I mean, if mm. it's the finals and the Defiant are up against, I don't know, Vancouver Titans, and mm. it's a underdog win and the Defiant completely stomped the Titans, well, that yeah. would be incredibly exciting and awesome. <laughs> that said, wouldn't it be, you know, just as fun to watch two amazing teams battle it out, you know, going toe to toe, the yeah. story, who knows what will happen until the final moments. Those games are always yeah, yeah. so much fun. I don't think we can argue about this one, Marissa. You're like having said that I love that because in your ideal world that would be it would be defiant and Titans in the end but Two unfortunately Canadian with teams. the defiant they haven't really been playing that no, well. No <laughs> it's been the stops for the defiant this past week anyway, Yeah no kidding we'll it's crazy how like sports and 30 tomorrow, stage sure. two just goes a different way completely right yeah. and even with the playoffs right now in hockey I mean everyone was thinking that the lightning were going to just completely trounce or demolish the Columbus Blue Jackets now mm. and now it's gone the other way and that's so exciting to watch like it is so incredible to see unless you're a lightning Fan, obviously, but right. it's so incredible to see a team stomp on another team that was supposed to be the Goliath. When you're supposed to be the giant and you get stomped on, that's entertaining. Yeah. If it's a very even keeled match and it is a back and forth, that is also equally as exciting. It just really depends on who you're cheering for in that moment. You want to know how I watch the Super Bowl? Because I don't care about the NFL whatsoever aside okay. from the Super Bowl. Tell I just me. root for whichever team is currently losing. Okay, AJ. That's I feel like we need to, the ultimate we need to have lessons in jumper. sports. That's okay. That way I'm That's rooting fine. for the underdog at all times. Or you just place prop bets. If you place oh. prop bets, I mean, anything could really be exciting. You just got to find the little things in sports, even in esports. You just got to find the little things to bring you joy. What's a prop bet? Oh, geez. Okay, so for like, this, for example, for example, in uh, <laughs> on the Super Bowl, you can place, there's like over-unders on how long the <sighs> national anthem will go for. Like if oh, it goes for over two things. minutes. Yeah, yes. that's the stuff. Or like uh, just like, little random things okay. like that a coach might do or a player might, like just, just random non-game related mm. bets. Okay. Well, let's Ooh. move from randomness to oh. some drama. Ooh. Our next topic is uh, about the infamous uh, roster leaker, Cod Burner. Yes. He's kicked off more drama in the community thanks to some spicy comments on Reddit. When a user asked why e United's simp was such a Debbie Downer, Cod Burner replied that he's the size of a 12-year-old girl, so he tweets like one, which understandably pissed simp off, yeah. who said Burner would never say it to his face on his real account. Yeah. Of course, uh, Burner is still out there Yo, at large. Marissa, yeah. do you love this Call of Duty stuff? And is Codburner good for the Call of Duty community, or should he be? Taken I out? mean, for the fans, 100, he's good for the community because he just he's stirring the pot. Everyone loves a good pot stir when you're not actually right. involved in the drama. It's fun to watch <laughs> on the outside just sipping the tea. Like, what's he gonna say next? Yo, yeah. that's a low blow though. Not to make a reference back to the height thing, but <laughs> I just feel like that is not, when it's something that somebody can't control, like height, for example, mm. I feel like those are really mean burns and Cod Burner really let him have it. I don't like that kind of stuff at all. I felt like that he's right, that's too mean and he would never say that to his face. And that's the problem with this Cod Burner is that there's no face to him, right? There's right. no, we have no definitive answer on who this guy is, what team he's working for or anything it's just like an insider somewhere just slowly leaking things but that really don't sometimes have truth to them sometimes he's just stirring the pot and creating rumors for no good reason yeah. and that's when it goes wrong if you're starting a rumor based off of nothing then well, we have a problem here's the other question then with this type of account are they beneficial for esports community when we're currently you know growing figuring mm. out where things lie is it good to have an account that's maybe even shared as some people have suspected Codburner is multiple yeah. people behind the account 
to have somewhere to vent things so you can put the information out there without having those slings and arrows coming your way. Yeah, that's like having a burner account. Like um, in NBA, Brian Colangelo had, they found out that his wife had, it was under his wife's name, but a separate account where he was just like going and insulting different players, insulting on different owners, like full on tweeting. Mm. And it, was, it wasn't him, it was his wife. Like discover this stuff that's happening behind the scenes. Listen, people, you better remember that IP addresses are attached to certain things that you own. Yep. So you better be careful with the things you decide to do or like private ghost accounts that you make that just VPN if you're yeah. gonna get into the dirty dirty <laughs> the, that's right no protect yourselves but also how about don't be a dick don't yeah. be out there assaulting people I don't cause drama that doesn't need to be caused there's really. there's ground there's lots of things that need to be put out there especially <laughs> when people are being mistreated like if you're yeah. using your burner account to defend justice and defend you sure. know ethical play I'm all for it, but if you're just there to like troll people, you know, step up, use your real identity. It's if I've true. got a criticism, I own it. That is, that's right, it's bad karma, mm. own the good stuff, just sprinkle good things all over the world, right? Sunshine yeah. lollipops, let's move on. Last week we talked about how an onstage fight, speaking of sunshine, sunshine and lollipops, <laughs> we're going to the NBA 2K League between players from Celtics, Crossover, and Hawks Talon GC. Now we know what the punishment will be for those players. The league has suspended the fight's instigator, Crossover's OFAB, for one game and find him 500 US dollars, it's like a thousand Canadian, while his teammate Mel East was fined the same amount. Talon GC Dat Boy Shots was also suspended for one game. So, AJ, do you think that this is a justified punishment? I mean, it was just a little bit of shoving back and forth. Do you feel like maybe it should they be did. harsher or a little? they're being a little too lenient? I, I think you, you're looking at setting precedent, right? Yeah. So you do have to consider very carefully what your punishments are mm. so that you prevent this kind of behavior in the future. A $500 fine, that doesn't seem like a whole lot of money for some pro esports players, but then again, different scenes different prize pools. Yeah, the 2K league, though. Yeah, 2K league, though. so I don't know. Like, that, that could be a lot of money yeah. for someone. But then again, if he's a popular streamer, he could make that in a couple of days. Yeah, that's true. It's, but there's they're now stuck together these houses, right? It's kind of all about the team. They've got to put all their eggs in that basket of right. the team and spend time with them. So I'm not sure if it is um, really putting a dent in their bank account or not, but it's USD. So, so to me, that's a lot of cash. And for these kids, like, it's just a new league. They're just starting. I honestly feel like little drums like this is actually good, speaking of drums, it's actually good for their league. I, that's the right. thing with the NBA, the, the NBA too. The, yeah. Like, it is fun to watch the drama unfold. It's everything that happens off of the court. It's everything that happens between these players on Twitter, between so, these players, like when the game is done and they're doing post-game interviews, any kind of salt that happens, that's the fire. That's what we want to see. So, are maybe we need a little shoving. evolve into like eSports meets MMA so they have their battle? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the eSports, and then get in the ring and then, you know, feud out and see. Listen, I would not be opposed to that <laughs> At all, I'd love to see them duke it out. Just IRL, like you fight in game. Can you fight out of game Have you too? Ever heard of chess boxing? Chess boxing? Yeah, it's what it sounds like. You play a game of chess, and then you box, and then you go back to a game of chess, and then you box your opponent. AJ, you was it some good kind of fever dream you had? No, it's a real thing. There was a documentary about chess boxing. It's oh my a god! Touring competition of people who are like MMA fighters and also chess masters. <laughs> okay, so they're fighters too. They're not like taking chess players. They're like, no. now you box. They're taking fighters and teaching them how to play chess, so they oh. have to do both, and it's it's well, actually kind of genius. That's fun, but let's reverse it. Let's take people that don't know how to fight at all right. and try to get them in the ring. See, that or would teach be them spice. Esports. Yo, let's box, AJ. <laughs> you want to put them up? No, uh, no. Let's, get it. Ah. let's move on to our okay. last story without boxing. Or so far using that mute button. Uh, time to prepare for the robot uprising, at least. It's time to prepare for it in Dota 2, I should say. Oh. Artificial intelligence software OpenAI took on reigning international champions OG in the show match this past weekend, and it did not go well for the fleshy meat sacks. <laughs> OpenAI AI swept Team Humanity in the three-game series, marking the first time that an AI team has defeated a professional esports team mm. on stream. So, Marissa, is this a sign of the robot, the robot, robot apocalypse? The robot. The apoc robot. Apocalypse. Uh, yes, for sure. We should always fear yeah. our robot masters 100%. Like, we know it's but coming. We've been warned about this, people, since Terminator. Like, hello, why do we keep giving them power? Should we worry about robots taking over in the esports scene? I mean, obviously, industrialization, robots taking over, lots of jobs and stuff. Is it just going to be more exciting watching two different developed AIs compete versus watching real people? Or should we maintain that it's always about watching the human no, skill see, growth? This is why we got to bring in the physical. We got to bring in the fighting let's fight yeah, yeah. IRL because robots can't do that it's just AI in game unless they create the real-life robots that are playing the games then we're just going then, to real steel then we're <laughs> 
<laughs> Hugh Jackman's going to show up. And... <laughs> they were cooking with the sauce. That's right. Another movie. God, they've been warning us about this for years. Yeah. Uh, no, I am interested only because they just keep doing this. Dota's done this before with the AI where they yeah. actually fought the like legitimate esports gamers and they didn't win. It was a back and forth. But mm. this time, the fact that it, they've improved and they got stomped, I guess it shows that, you know, <laughs> artificial intelligence is very intelligent and it learns things. Yeah. and it corrects itself, and it does the job next time, which is very concerning for our futures, everybody. So maybe mm. let's stop giving robots power. Like, let that be the bottom mm. line. Let's just stop this, okay? I'm scared for all of us. <laughs> I did it! I hit the mute button, because I have a different opinion. I, I think it's fascinating to watch. It's still all about human, um, like, endeavor, human effort. The people who are coding these things to learn and grow, we're learning about ourselves, the way the whole world works. Yeah. I feel really guilty I hit the mute button. I feel weird about this. But I, I think we. Sh it's always cool to watch humans go up against these things, because, they're yeah, they're not playing against other people, but they're playing against the creation of other people. It's not like they're playing against the game code itself and the like, AI-controlled characters. And now I've got a lot of time to fill for the fact that I <laughs> muted Marissa. <laughs> and my no, it's just okay. I'm, I'm 30 fine. seconds has passed. I can jump back in. Okay. I don't disagree with you, but I like your saucy mute, AJ. Now it's time <laughs> to see what streamers are up to and clip it. Our first clip comes from Kid Boga, who decided to play a joke on technical support. We went to Landmark Cinemas, and you uh -huh. got lost, and then you were in this concession line, and you peed your pants, and you just kept on screaming. I didn't pee pop, 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 my pop. pants. I wet my diaper. There's a difference, Whatever Kiki. Did, it's more Stephanie, distinguished. Stephanie is a part-time manager, and now I can't get a job. I'm not going to have this discussion with you while we're on the phone. with technical Edwin support. is a nice man. I think he'll understand. It, you have a grandma, don't you, honey? I do have. Does she wear diapers? No. Oh. oh yeah. God bless her. God not bless all, her. Not all grandmas wear diapers. Some of them learn how to hold it, Grandma. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You know what, though? That would have made, I feel like if I were working in tech support, a call like that would have made my day. Yeah, probably. And my week, really. I would have talked about it with all my friends exactly. at work. Like, yeah. never mind this call I just got. I would take to Twitter and let people know there. Mm. And then only to discover that it was just a joke. See, that's when it feels bad. Mm. I don't like that. I think like I've that. discovered a new place to take my Twitch channel. I got to do these prank phone calls. Prank calls with AJ? No. AJ, I, that doesn't seem like you. That seems like not. <laughs> I'd be like, is your refrigerator running? <laughs> No, I, no, I'm sorry. Don't, no, don't go check. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> just, Never mind. Yeah, Never mind. No, anyway. it's okay, Rip. <clears throat> our Rip. next clip comes from the crew at Offline TV who have uh, killed our collective dreams of becoming <laughs> the next ninja. Oh. Ten okay. to fifteen viewers puts you at the top one percent of streamer. So weird. That's yeah, crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, you know when people ask like, oh, how do I get bigger on Twitch? I say go be famous somewhere else, and then, and then go <laughs> and to come back and later. Come back. Just starting from Twitch without anyone to help you, you it's are legitimately not. Impossible. It's, it's you can. You're competing with so many people. You might be more likely to win the Powerball. <gasps> oh. It's it's crushing and also uplifting at the same time. Really? Like, I, I think I'm almost averaging about 10 viewers given the you know, standard great. stream. So like good. knowing that you're pretty close to the top percent, that's not bad. Yeah. Oh, man. But also yeah. knowing how hard it is to grow on this platform. I know. Okay, Rip, do we have to just say goodbye to Unmuted then? Like, is that how this works? No, we're because doing we're great just, here on Unmuted. We're you see all the too. folks out there and in chat. Thank you guys for watching and yeah. participating and sharing with friends. It really means a lot to us. My goodness, we don't have anybody big and famous, like, lifting us up like Drake. Although we should give him a call because yeah, as Drake a fellow Canadian, yeah. he should technically help us out. I think so. Okay, fine. He's we'll on here. my speed dial. It's about that time in the show where we take a deep dive onto my Twitter timeline to discover all the fun things the pros are saying or complaining about. But we all know my favorite tweets come in the form of calling people out on their BS. Luckily, my girl Gen G's new foe delivers. She says, I'm actually lulling. Some kid screenshot my tweet yesterday about shooting my shot and sent it to this girl saying it was about him. She DM'd me on Insta asking about it. Little boy, if you see this, get an effing grip. She continues sharing the messages that this dummy sent the girl in an attempt to make her jealous. Can you, can, can you believe that? Guys, speaking of Drake, are you stupid or are you dumb? <laughs> like really? You're gonna try to take a tweet of a girl that you don't even know 
send it, screenshot it, send it to another girl saying, oh, she's talking about me, by the way. I had to let her down easy, but because it's because of right. you. Like, are you serious? You're using that kind of tricks and manipulation? Listen, girls aren't going to believe you. They're actually going to reach out to that said girl because that's what girls do. We're going to find you on your BS. Boy, hey, I hate that. Don't completely make this about one gender versus the other. Oh, I had some no. weird stuff happen to me too, and it was ladies doing it back <gasps> way back in the early days of Facebook. Like a lady messaged my then girlfriend saying that I was cheating on <gasps> her with this girl who I never met because it was Facebook, and it was you know that time of like, oh, someone wants to be my friend. Sure, I'll accept your friend request. So then I had to like lock my Facebook down because my real life relationship was getting affected by the no. weirdos on the internet that I didn't know. So okay, you know, drama comes from all places. For sure, it's boys and girls yeah. collectively. Can you be? Smart, stop being lying, manipulative people. That is not cool at all. Also, mm. karma's gonna get ya. Yeah. All right, next up, Injustice and Mortal Kombat pro player Honey Bee sums up how many are feeling leading up to Combat Cast. <laughs> we'll have a look at the tweet there. Yeah. <laughs> Ready for Combat Cast. Mm. I mean, he's probably got dry skin and a runny nose. That's what that's all about. Oh, is that, is that yeah. what that was? He's that's... just gotta moisturize his hands for playing Mortal Kombat. And the Kleenex are for his tears of joy oh, for the okay. excitement surrounding the release uh, you gotta, of gotta the stay, game. Gotta stay loose. Yeah, so, I went to. Uh, it's a hard time for many of us. One of, yeah, one of my first boyfriends, I. I <laughs> Where's this story going, no, I Listen, when I first when I first moved to Toronto, I started dating this guy, and I went to his place and literally read on his. <laughs> On his bedside table, this is like a red flag for me. On his bedside table, he had that tissue, he had Vaseline, mm. and he had a ruler. And a ruler, those three that, items. Those three items just together on his bedside table. What? Why? Maybe he was Anyways, into we're not dating anymore. competitive sneezing. That com <laughs> competitive sneezing. See how the distance I can get there. Oh my god, AJ, I love you. Listen, our last <laughs> profound thought comes from Gearbox software founder Randy Pitchford. He asked, on what platform will you be playing Borderlands 3? And he put out a poll to ask which uh, platform fans are choosing. A former fan replies, none. Unfortunately, after the epic game store fiasco, I can't support you. Sorry, sir. So Randy replied to this saying, cool, then you won't be needing to follow me anymore either. I'll take care of that for you. Yo, Randy, with the quick block and the salt. So do you think, he, I don't know, should he have clapped back in such a manner? Because a lot of people were assaulting on him for behaving that way as a professional in the space. Yeah, uh, whatever. What? It's, it's not that the, bad. Saying that he can't oh. take critique. Well, if someone's critiquing you and they're a follower and they're giving you guff and you don't want to keep hearing it, yeah, block them, right? Like, that's the attitude. But does but that help you as a creator to not be taking any kind of constructive criticism from people who used to love your game? I think if you're a small creator, you should be listening to that criticism. But if you're someone on Randy's level, like, he's got to be aware of it from all angles at this yeah. point. He, he's got meetings with his marketing teams and all the different people telling him what the fan base is saying. So mm. this one guy on Twitter is, you know, giving him a rough time. I can understand that kind of reaction of like, okay, okay guess buddy. What? You assault on AJ, off. AJ's gonna block you. Probably. Just let, this be, let this be your forewarning. Unless it's I like don't, a good you know criticism. What? I'll take those. I don't, I usually don't block though. I'm not like a blocking kind of girl. I will have a little back and forth with people if they're giving mm. me the gears and I try to understand them as human beings. Like maybe they're just having a bad day. I do and the then same. maybe maybe they just don't get me. They're not picking up what I'm putting down. And so I try to make them understand me a little bit more. Mm. And if that doesn't work, I realize, dang, I just wasted a lot of my time. That, that's why and I that go to the block bad. sometimes. It's See, just, and the block would come handy. Bye. All right, let's move on to some crowd control. This is where we show all the goods the people of the internet have been creating or sharing. Let's turn it up with the first post tweeted out by Sean Wasabi. Really good. Okay, so get that now as the bed track for unmuted moving forward. That's pretty oh, good. Oh no, I like our track. Okay, it's a good track. But what's your favorite of all time video game track? Ooh. Um, you don't say Halo. You're dead to me. What? Oh. <laughs> it's just so iconic. 
I suppose. Still but Echo the Dolphin had some beautiful stuff in there, mm -hmm. and actually uh, the no, soundtrack for the uh, Donkey Kong uh, Country was uh, amazing. Oh, you're as going well. DK. Yeah, the underwater uh, tunes in there. I for sure thought you were going to say Zelda. I mean, Zelda's iconic as well, but if you like. I've watched a video recently about all the effort that went into designing the music for Donkey Kong Country because yeah, of the yeah. like, complications of the platform and the way that they had to write all the code in order to get the music in there and sound as to good relate, as it did. Yeah. It, it's just phenomenal, and those huh. tracks are just, they, they stick with you. Okay, all right. I'm not going to, I, can't, I can't mute you on that. I can't, because I agree with you. Yeah, Halo, just anything that's iconic. So, like Halo or even like Super Mario Bros., like anything that you hear at one time and you're like, oh, yeah, I got mm. that. Like, where it it spans all genres, like my mom could tell you what it's from. Mm. Well, although she couldn't tell you about Halo, but definitely about Mario. She yeah. got that much at least. There we go. Yeah. Well, next up, we got a clip that really encapsulates the idea of a perfect landing posted by the Genesis pattern. All right, driving along here. Boing! Who's this? Ooh. Who's this? Oh, what? Okay. What's happening? Going off. <gasps> oh, to the, money! The ship. Look at the. Look at the. And wow. there's a helipad awaiting. Wow! Boing! <gasps> Tens all around! <laughs> Dang! Baby, yo, that was brilliant. That was pretty awesome. What's the craziest thing you've ever seen in a video game? Um, craziest thing I've ever seen in a video game? Probably when I was playing L.A. Noir and my car somehow showed up inside. It was a glitch, but showed right. up inside the home of someone I was questioning. And it was like, I'm like, oh, this is a dilly of a pickle. How do right. I get myself out of this? Anything to do with a glitch? Yeah. That's like the crazy things to me Which, that actually happen. Glitches do to me. cause weird things. Yeah. So I'm talking like, you know, crazy. No, like I've never been able to complete Feats of something. impressive things like that. No, I had no, a weird, I'm no good. It wasn't a glitch, but back when we were first playing our original NES system, we had some friends over and we turned off the NES. And at that moment, you know, you turn off back then, when you turn off your system, it would just go right back to TV. Yeah, yeah. And at the moment you turned it off, the TV went static. <gasps> Poor. And then suddenly the hostess chip guys were coming into the Mario level that we had just turned the TV or turn the game off what? of. And it was just the timing of turning off the game at the exact moment that a commercial that was branded NES for Hostess Chips was on. So for a moment we Weird. thought like, we broke our television set, now the Hostess Chip guys are like invading <laughs> our system. We'd never seen the commercial before. It was an amazing moment of coincidence. It was the Illuminati. Exactly. Our last post comes from Frosha Rosha. It's titled, I Love This Feeling. Let's see if we can relate. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, birdie. Oh, yeah. oh. But this is very indicative of what it's like to have Steam, especially when the Steam sales go on. Just I know. But pour me all the new games that I'll never get time to play because I keep dancing around the bowl looking at more Steam games. I know. Do you have a specific game that you have on your list right now that you feel like you want to hit but just n no, never will? My brother bought me uh, the most recent Doom. Oh. And I've heard nothing but good things. And just I just won't. have not gotten around to it. No, and I feel so bad. Into it. I feel like that's the case with anything that's like on sale. You do Steam sale, but yeah, even yeah, if you're yeah. just like shopping and it's like sale time, it's and you $3. go and buy I'll play that one day. Boom. Exactly. But like a anything, I I'm sure I even have something in my closet that I got on sale that I'm just like, you know what? I don't. It, this was three dollars, but I'm never going to wear it. See, that's a waste. Mm. We need to stop wasting our money. We need to find things that spark joy. Spock joy? Spock, like Spock joy? No, no, I was that was I was doing my Marie Kondo. You didn't oh, I see. get that. Okay. She, okay. Anyway, anyway thanks for joining me today, AJ. <laughs> thanks for having me. Thank you out there for watching us. Hope you enjoyed the show. Remember that you can always hit us up on our socials at Squad State and let us know anything you want to react to or discuss. Until next time, see you in the future. Bye.